welcome to Studio 5. Dr. Jackie Green, Willie and Corey Robertson, and Tasha Layton. They're all on deck for today's show. But first, it's time to fire up the countdown of the top five stories in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are the first two. At number five, a Studio 5 first look at Ordinary Angels. God is here with us right now, and we are here with you. Something about that little girl without a mom sick and the family bled dry from all the hospital bills i think i'm supposed to help based on the true story of a frustrated hairdresser who discovers purpose when she meets a father struggling to provide for his two daughters with one needing a transplant hi sharon yes ma'am i just wanted to come by and give you this i just made dinner if you want to stay would love to what are you doing i met this woman She's a mess. Perfect, she'll fit right in. The inspiring tale of faith and miracles comes from the Irwin Brothers and hits theaters in October. Smile. Girls, help your daddy out. <laughs> I've owned four small businesses. I'm good at plenty of things. Taking no for an answer ain't one of them. At number four, a few snapshots from fashion's biggest night, the annual Met Gala where there's breaking baby news. And right on top, right on top. Tennis great Serena Williams arrived revealing a baby bump and making headlines. With news, she and her husband are expecting their second child. Up top in the middle, right yeah. in the middle. Well, that begins this week's countdown and brings us to our sit down. Our guest is Dr. Jackie Green. She's a wife, mother, pastor, dentist, and author. And her latest book is called Permission to Live Free. Living the life God created you for. He called us fearfully and wonderfully made. We are masterpieces of the Most High God. And if he calls us good, who are we to say anything else? Who are we to say anything about the master of the universe creating what he desired? Why would we doubt? Why would we misstep? Why would we hesitate to step up and take our rightful places of owning a life of permission? I hear you talk a lot about permission, uh, whether it's weekly, online. Yes. Why permission? What made you feel you needed that? What, what, ha what happened? I believe that so often we live in a world where we're always searching. We're looking for validation. We're looking for someone to affirm. What I found is as I began to build my relationship with God and began to receive a love that was like nothing else, it began to give me and equip me with the strength to grab a hold of something that I didn't have, which was a boldness to not just know a thing, but to live a thing out. So many of us are living, but we're not living the way God intended us to live because we are handing over a thing that God gave us from original intent, which was dominion and authority. His righteous DNA lives on the inside of us. And I think that when we can tap into that, I believe that we own a life that is so free, so fun, um, so not pretend, uh, where we're actually able to be honest and we're able to bless people by right of freely being who God made us to be from the beginning. And that for me is what permission was all about, me being precisely and fully who God made me to be. There's something you said in that that struck me and it was in a message you were, were preaching mm -hmm. and you may not even thought about it, but I had, it stopped me in my tracks. It was like, God has given you power over hell and I was like, huh, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that our authority? He says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. That's the same power that was in Jesus that allowed him to go to death hell and the grave to lead captivity captive. And he says that, yes, I'm gonna ascend, but I'm not gonna leave you without a gift. He came in flesh to dwell among us for us to know that we don't have to live defeated or we don't have to live shine back from who God made us to be. And so yes, we have the ability to speak a name and at that name, demons and darkness backs up because of the name that we call them. You sit here so perfectly manicured, <laughs> speaking in authority, uh, and then to hear you say you didn't have the boldness to man, live free. Man, I know the God that has equipped me to find myself in rhythm with him and in pace with him, where I can live and move and have interviews and have my being with him. And he will fill my mouth just as he did with the, the disciples of the early church, the apostles of the early church. They said that they were ordinary men, but somehow they were saying things that were extraordinary. I believe the same truth is for every ordinary person watching this, this segment, that maybe you are just going into a classroom to teach or you're showing up to be a good wife to your husband or your 
or a good husband to your wife, that God can meet you in all these ordinary things and do extraordinary things through you simply because you don't hold back your natural nature and you allow the grace that is so sufficient, the grace and the supernatural power of God to meet you in the natural and allow supernatural things to be birthed. That's what I feel that people see now. It's not anything that I have of my own. It's by right of me plugging into something that is so much greater than me. Mm, beautiful. So now we're looking at this book now, but you actually wrote this book some time ago because I was looking, I was like, I, is this the second book or is this the, the, the yes. <laughs> when did you initially sit down to do this? So we actually wrote the book. I wrote the book in 2018 and I released it self-published in January 2019. We were so excited. The Lord was just pressing on me that women needed to hear my voice and women needed someone to show them an example of freedom. And so I stepped out there in obedience to do the thing. I released it, but it was really just an act of faith because I didn't have time to promote it. We didn't have, I mean, we were also in very early stages of our ministry as a church. And so I didn't have the ability to give what I would have wanted to give behind it. But what I did give was enough. And that's what I want people that are watching this today to understand that there are times that you might give this small thing that you might feel is so insignificant and there's no way it's going to make its mark on the earth. And God is saying, but you gave me obedience. And I tell people this, that inside of obedience, I believe everything that you need is found. I believe that the favor that you need, the, the, the person that needs to make the book deal, I actually gave this book and somehow it landed in the hands of a literary agent that I never had met, that I didn't know anything about it. She was so convicted by the message of permission. She was saying, I have to get this in the hand of a national publisher. And she did just that. It goes from this thing that I just released in faith to the Lord saying, God, I believe that you'll bless this small thing break it and multiply it and that you'll bring forth a harvest and what we're sitting inside of as we release this book now um, nationally released um, by Thomas Nelson is the harvest of what he releases on the other side of giving the seed of obedience because it does multiply. Dr. Jackie's book, Permission to Live Free, Living the Life God Created You For is available for you wherever you purchase or download your reading material. Still ahead. It's a Broadway-style musical unfolding beneath a big tent in Texas. We'll take you inside. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. At number three. It takes time to do well. It takes even longer to be well. Big business news from Bishop T.D. Jakes. The T.D. Jakes Group and Wells Fargo are announcing a 10-year partnership to build communities for all income levels. Now, this partnership includes a commitment of one, up to one billion dollars with a B from Wells Fargo to help pay for various projects. Their first project is a mixed income housing and retail development outside Atlanta. The nearly 95 acre property is a former army base, Fort McPherson, which is right next to Tyler Perry Studios. What do you get out of this, Bishop, being involved in this partnership? First and primary thing for me is legacy. You know, it's, it's a legacy piece for me. I want to give back. I want to do something for uh, people who have been loyal and faithful to me and people that I know and love. At number two. Hi, I'm Shonda Pierce. I am that comedian that shows up in your sanctuary every now and then. And I am so appreciative of your support for the last 32 years. That very busy comedian is on the road right now. But this Shonda Pierce live in concert tour may be her last. She's hinting at retirement, even as she promotes her new film, Roll With It. I know you're a very, very, very busy person, and I appreciate that. But I really, really, really would appreciate it if you would unlock my stinking door. Really? Roll with it, baby. So May 9th, 11th, and 13th, rollwithit.movie. You'll get all the information you need. Welcome back to Studio 5. That's going to leave us with just one more story to share in this week's countdown. We'll get to it in just a little bit. We want to turn now to a new Broadway-style musical making its home in Texas. It's called His Story, and it's based on the life of Jesus, who performs miracles, gives wisdom, and connects with people from all walks of life. Willie and Corey Robertson from the hit reality show Duck Dynasty are the producers. One thought in the sky is subject to me, respecting me, the waves display. Time stands still, see you walking on the waves, calling me. Tell us.
Davis, what can we expect from this musical event? Well, I just want to start out and say that you may not think of Broadway style musicals and myself, but uh, <laughs> it's about Jesus, uh, uh, that is the connection. When Willie got the first song, he was sent a, one of the songs on a video through a text and he came to me, he watched it first and came to me with like tears brimming in his eyes. And I was like, what, what just happened? He's like, I just saw this song from a musical and like, it's incredible. And we were just kind of sold and all in from, from song one, we watched the whole thing and there's, it's just full of like scripture and God's word. And it was written by this 17 year old girl, which is a whole other miraculous story. Wow. But um, yeah, we loved it from, the moment we saw it, and we just were like, how can we be a part of it? Corey, you mentioned that the author is 17 years old. Can you tell me about the author? Yes, she is. So um, her name is Anna Brown, and she her, her family were actually missionaries in the Ukraine at the time. And she saw the musical Hamilton, and um, I think she just watched it on video and was just really moved by it that musical and and felt like it made her interested in history and all of this. And she said, she just felt a tug from the Lord to say like, hey, do that for me. And she wrote 40 songs, I think over the course of a year. And that's what became this musical. She said her sister taught her four chords real quick. And then she wrote 40 songs. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> like, she was a music writer at all. It was, uh, it's really, the story behind his story is just incredible. Wow. Willie, how would you describe the music? We're talking 40 songs that God gives her. How would you describe the music that touched you so deeply? It's different. It's like, you know, it's all, it's like, um, you know, it's young, it's hip, there's, it's, it's pop, it's rap, it's traditional hymn type music. It's all together. It's just sort of a, a mixture of, um, of, of different sound, which kind of, you know, keeps you interested in, in, in the way it flows together. It's just incredible. And, and we think the arts is, you know, um, it's a great way to, to, to show the gospel in a different way. A lot of the people uh, putting this together aren't necessarily believers. They're, they're, they come from all sorts of different worlds. And, and that's what we loved about it. You know, this was not, you know, didn't come out of one church or one denomination. This was a uh, just seems like it's really of God coming together. Um, and with it being in Dallas is a great spot, you know, to go and, um, you know, and, and share that. There's a lot of believers, but I think a lot of non-believers will watch this too and just be drawn in by the story and captivated by Jesus, like we all were at, at one point in our lives. From both of you, what are you praying this project does? You, you get to know Jesus in another way. So I would say fall in love with him again. If you don't know him, get to know him. You know, I hope this sparks something in people's life that come to this musical to say like, oh, I wanna know more about Jesus and who he was and what he did for me. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, for me, it's about uh, just an easier way to share your faith. And so it can start a conversation about that you know you know paul says i became all things to all men you know it's to snatch some from the fire and so uh, this is just another thing that can start a conversation where people uh maybe there's questions they can ask they see something they're like man i've i've always you know wondered about this i will pull you out one step at a time and you'll see you're just one step closer to me this is a space that they may can go into and, and can start getting some of those uh, questions answered maybe that they've had. You could say his story, the musical, is a theatrical event 2,000 years in the making. Tickets are available right now with shows starting in just a matter of weeks. With that, we have made it to a special moment in every week's show, and that is time for a story in pictures. Here's this week's Studio 5 snapshot. Courtesy of Studio 5 friend and photographer Gary Thomas Kaipa, we take you to the UK for a bit of a coronation celebration. It's art from British illustrator Eleanor Tomlinson. Famous for her drawings of the late queen, Tomlinson released a new collection dedicated to the coronation of King Charles, which takes place this weekend. 
It includes limited edition prints and commemorative jigsaw puzzles. And it is this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Still ahead. Look what you've done! A look at what Tasha Layton's done. Written a new book. Now I love the subtitle. I want to read it to you. The lies we believe and the truth that sets us free. Can you talk about some of the lies that you were telling yourself uh, and the truth that broke through? Get the answers when we come back. Tasha Layton entered the music world as a contestant on American Idol. Her powerful voice landed her a spot on tour with pop star Katy Perry. But she found her voice in Christian music and her journey has now made her a first time author with the release of her book, Look What You've Done. The soul-piercing lyrics are the heart of what's become Tasha Layton's signature single. But this is so much more than a song. It's moved her from American Idol and background singer for Katy Perry to center stage and red carpets. And this is a miracle story that keeps giving. It inspired the title of my new book and it's really been the theme of my life so far. What was it that happened that made you decide you wanted to write a book and not just a book, but a book that people need to read? So I started to write down stories where, you know, there was maybe an interesting thing about my life, but something that God had showed, shown me during that season. And I just started to write them down so I wouldn't forget. And then over time, that grew into 40 some thousand words. And I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this. Now, I love the subtitle. I want to read it to you. The lies we believe and the truth that sets us free. Can you talk about some of the lies that you were telling yourself uh, and the truth that broke through them? Yeah, I think one of the biggest lies that I believed, I have to prove to the world that I am good. And I've spent my life trying to protect myself and prove to the world that I'm good. And it was exhausting. Now the lies took you to some pretty dark and low points. God, what is happening? What am I doing? What are you doing? Take us back to them. You know, it's interesting you ask that because I share in the book about trying to take my life. And I share details in the book that I don't normally share when I speak about that subject. And you know, when I tried to do that and when I was experiencing those emotions, I have to say, I still didn't know the truth. A failed suicide attempt, <laughs> um, that was a lowest of low, but it, it didn't free me. I still had to experience freedom later in life. Now, that lowest of low did shock me enough to, to cause me to change my trajectory, but I definitely needed to hear truth, and it wasn't until my 30s that I heard that truth. I needed to hear Jesus say, you are worthy, you are good, you are innocent, you are pure. When I heard those words over my life straight from Him, that's when I just felt so free, and I, I felt free ever since from those lies. Now, I imagine your hope is sharing these low points from your life will allow those experiencing similar problems to connect. Yeah, I think when, when you are honest about what you're actually feeling, you know, the guilt and shame we feel from what we think and what we feel. And when you hear someone's story, when it's an honest account, when they don't hold back, man, it, it makes you feel seen. And I think when I experienced God's truth replacing the lies in my life, I felt his love in a way that I had never felt before. I knew that he loved me. I knew that he adored me. He adored my singing voice. He loved when I worshiped him, when I led worship. All the things that I, uh, that were in my heart to do, I felt a freedom to do like never before because I knew how God felt about me. I am literal living proof right here sitting in this chair of how much God can take a person and turn it around. 
Look What You've Done is available right now wherever books are sold. With that, we have made it to the final story in this week's Top 5 Countdown. Here is what is finishing on top of this week's best headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment. At number one. Cause when the price is going, up, hold hands up. The price is going down. Chance the Rapper headlines a major faith event. Students rallied to fill the University of Oklahoma's football stadium for a time of worship with Christian Music's Kerry Job and Chandler Moore, coupled with a concert from hip hop star Chance the Rapper. Captivated by the pretty things. Feeling the excitement. Take it over. There's always a fight. Chandler Moore shares new music with the massive crowd from his yet-to-be-released new project. I've been calling this music my new album, Stadium Music. I've been telling my friend, oh yeah, Stadium is big. The lyrics are big. The music is big. The vibe is big. Everybody can get with it. So the fact that the first time, and it wasn't, you know, intentional, but the fact the first time that I'm singing it is in a stadium, it means a lot to me personally about what I feel like this album is going to do and what I feel like the lyrics are going to do and, and the music is going to do. So. Uh, it's, it's special tonight, really, really special. All of the hard days, the ones I couldn't pray away. I turned them out to end in this head. Now I'm a soldier when I strike, I end this head. Welcome back. Music fuels this production every week, and this week it's Lauren Daigle. Take a listen, and you'll hear why Thank God I Do is what's playing in my ear. Well, on that musical note, we are just about out of time. So let's take a moment and look ahead to see what we're cooking up for you come next week. We'll travel to Zambia, where Arizona Cardinal offensive tackle Kelvin Beecham is at work off the field with World Vision, helping to deliver clean drinking water wells to areas in desperate need. Clean water is foundational. Um, you know, it sets the stage for everything. Please make time to join us for that story and so much more next week. Right now we have time for just one more thing and that is a word, a final word. And we're gonna give that to Dr. Jackie Green. If you could go back in time mm -hmm. and speak to little Jackie, oh. that little girl, what would you tell her in light of you sitting here now, dentist, wife, a <laughs> mom, pastor, what would you tell that little girl? I would tell her never, never let go of who you were from the beginning. When I was a four year old, I was much like this girl. I believed that God could do anything. I believed that impossible was not a thing that was, that even resonated with the God that was so powerful. Uh, but what happened is I moved from my early stages of believing God. I believe he can heal my headache. I believe he can help me with my test. I believe that God can do these power, powerful things through me. I would wear my mom's long, long earrings and I would <laughs> sing in the choir as if nobody was watching. But as I became aware of eyes and the critiques and um, just how, how the world has so many demands and expectations of you. I began to shelter and hide the true essence of my beauty. I began to counterfeit uh, and add these things that I thought would make me better or more valuable because of the traumas of my father leaving and the, uh, the trauma of this crazy thing that happens with my hair. Because I felt like I wasn't good enough, I started to try to prove and uh, please everybody. I pleased the boyfriend, I pleased the teachers. I go through this whole journey of losing myself and trying to show myself approved to everyone else. It wasn't until I was getting ready to go off to college, I recognized I didn't even know myself. I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know my voice. I didn't know who I was supposed to be. And I went through a journey of undoing and unlearning. It wasn't that I didn't know. It was that I had to get back to who he made me to be from the beginning. If you want to wear your polka dots because it makes you happy with the purple boots, wear them because that's who God made you to be. And I'm saying that to any woman that's out there that might be still stuck in the house because you're afraid to go back to school. Even if you have a GED and that was where you stopped, 
it's never too late to start again. And that's what I'm saying to the little girl, Jackie. Don't forget who you were from the beginning. It's enough to start again and go forward. Dr. Jackie Green, thank you. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then please come on back. See where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching.